Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Frank Malarsik, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing some new updates that I made to my dividend tracking spreadsheet. So specifically, I'm going to be showing you how I'm scraping the three-year dividend CAGR uh, off of a website, which I'll go over uh, in a minute. And the CAGR uh, stands for a compound annual growth rate. And for the dividend, it's basically the rate of growth of that dividend over the past three years. Uh, so I was hoping to get a five or 10 year CAGR, um, but I just couldn't find a good source that was uh, easy to scrape and just made sense. Uh, so if I, I'll still be looking uh, periodically, and if I find one, I'll update you guys in the future. But I'm also gonna be touching on some just formatting and aesthetic aspects of the spreadsheet that I've just changed up just to make it look a little bit better. Um, so hopefully you enjoy that as well. Stick around to the end if you wanna see that and uh, I'll get right into the video. So for the three year dividend CAGR, um, I'm gonna be using Reuters. I couldn't find like a five or 10 year and Reuters was the best place I could find to scrape the uh, three year. Uh, Guru Focus does have some stuff for the CAGR, uh, like three, five and 10 years, but I, uh, they just have it set up in a way that was hard for me to scrape or I couldn't really figure it out at this point. So maybe I'll be able to find, figure that out in the future, but for now I'm just gonna be using Reuters. And the one tricky thing here is that the URL uh, has this period and N after the ticker symbol. Uh, so you just gotta add that in in your script uh, when you're adding in your ticker symbol as well. So that's not too hard, but I'll show you that later. Uh, and then if you scroll down here to the growth percentage section, uh, we're just gonna be getting this right here, dividend growth rate of three years, sorry. Um, and we're gonna be using the beautiful soup uh, library for Python. And this is just a website with a lot of helpful info. It's a documentation. I'll leave the link to that in the description as well. Um, so I'm not really gonna go through much of this stuff right now, but I am gonna show you this website, which is basically the main resource I used um, in order to uh, create this scraping uh, mechanism. So basically uh, you need this requests and beautiful soup uh, libraries or modules and then basically you just uh, get the URL and I'll show you this in my code, but this website just has a bunch of helpful stuff that I use, so I'll link that as well if you're interested in checking it out. Okay, so this is my uh, short script and I have requests and then import BS from BS4, import beautiful soup, and then I'm also importing gspread, uh, which all this stuff right around here is just the gspread authorization, so if you haven't, uh, see my video on that, I'll leave our, it up here, it should be up above. And then also I had import OS, and I'm using this change directory function, um, and I'm doing that so that I can run this script every month in the uh, task scheduler. And um, I also did a video on that, so I'll link that up above as well. Um, those are both uh, really uh, helpful for me and just made my uh, automation of my scripts even better. So. Um, Check that out as well if you want to. Um, and then this is where I start uh, the um, meat and potatoes of what I'm doing. So first I wanted to check if the uh, value that I get in from for the CAGR is a float uh, because for some of them if they haven't been paying dividends for a while or if for some reason I have a dividend stock that or a stock that just doesn't pay dividends um, then it's not going to be a number it's just going to be dashes or nothing. Uh, so I want to check that. Um, so I'm just saying try float s, and then if it's if it's true, then it returns true, and if it's not, then it returns false, basically. Um, so I'm going to use that in an if statement down below, and then right here, I'm just getting all of the cells in my spreadsheet that have a stock in them. So for example, right now I think I have 21 uh, stocks in my spreadsheet. But if maybe I add more and then I'm up to like 30, then this will make it so that um, you can still do that, do this function for all of those stocks. So it's just saying, this is assuming I have a max of 39. So it's saying for J in range two to 40, if this value is blank, then I'm just gonna break out and then I'll have that value of J stored in there as the last value um, or as the first value that doesn't have a stock in it. And then when I go into this next loop, I'm gonna make the upper bound on my rows J so that I don't go, I only go up to one above J when I'm looking for that um, 
ticker symbol. So then I'm going to go into this other loop with i in the range of 2 to j because that's where I have my ticker symbols. And I'm going to get my ticker symbol in with just sheet.cell.value. Um, we've went over that before. And then this is the URL uh, that I had. So I'm just putting in the ticker in the middle there. And then I'm using these uh, two lines right here. Basically just set up your uh, code or your script to be able to use the beautiful soup uh, module with that website. And then this find underscore all function is basically going to give me a list um, of all of the div tags uh, that have a class of this key metrics. And what those are is those are the different sections on the website. So there's like the growth uh, section and there's some other sections at all as well, but we're just focused on the growth one. And then we're going to just look at the sixth one of those sections, which was the growth one, or actually it's the seventh, but it's at index position six. And then from those, from that section, that growth section, we're going to find all the TD tags because those are the rows in that section. And then we're going to get the fifth one of those and get the text because that is the, um, we want the text of that uh, CAGR. And then basically we're going to check if that is a float number with this is float function that we created up here. And if it is, then we are going to make it a float and divide by 100. And the reason we need to make it a float and then divide by 100 is because the CAGR that's listed is already a percent. So for example, for apples, it was around 11%. So it listed number 11. But if we go into our spreadsheet and make that a percent, so that it has the little percent symbol afterwards, then that's going to make it like 1100%. So we have to divide by 100 um, just to make that format a little bit nicer. And then if it's not a float, then it's just going to make this num CAGR variable equal to the string version of it. And then we're just going to go and update the cell uh, in our position in our spreadsheet where we want it. And that's it. And then we're going to go through that until we do that for all the uh, positions. OK, so in my spreadsheet here, I added this in in the uh, far right side here. So I have a three-year CAGR. And I um, just brought them in and then formatted them as a percent and put them in there like that. And then I have a weighted CAGR, which is just the three-year CAGR times the equity percentage. Uh, so we've done stuff like that before with the beta. Um, so I've talked about that before. And then I'm finding the average three-year CAGR by summing all those up. So unfortunately for my portfolio, it's only about 6.3%. Um, but hopefully we can get that moving up uh, in the near future. And then I added this as well to my summary page down here. And then as you can see, I added these uh, alternating colors. It just makes the whole spreadsheet look a little better in my opinion. Um, and it just makes it look more professional, I guess, and easier to look at, easier to distinguish the different rows and columns. Um, so I did that. And then these ones that are orange here, those are still to signify that I have to uh, input those values manually. So that's going to wrap it up for the technical part of this video. Uh, the quote today is, the best school is the one you can afford. And um, that's just something my grandpa has always uh, said. He was always kind of trying to teach everyone how to be good with money and be uh, frugal. I mean, my parents were certainly uh, doing that as well, but he was there as well too. And um, I just think that's important in life, uh, not just for a college or your education or something like that, but really just anything. Um, a lot of times I just think people go a little bit crazy once they get out of college and uh, they start making a lot more money than they're used to. Uh, so I just really think it's important to only buy what you can afford. And if you have to take on debt, uh, make sure you're really aware of what you're doing and educated and stuff like that. Thanks for sticking with me to the end, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, drop a like. And if you're not already, make sure to subscribe so you can see some uh, future videos about my spreadsheet as I get even more and more features added. And uh, I think I'm going to be doing a dividend update in the next week or two, so stay tuned for that. And I'll see you in the next one.